Pac men's basketball hosts Miami tonight in PNC in what is another must win game. But first, let's get existential. You are locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers can join today and get $200 back in bonus bets with a first bet of $5 that wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Happy Tuesday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. NC State men's basketball hosts the Miami Hurricanes tonight in PNC Arena. 9 p.m. tip, and a lot of folks are worried about how many fans might actually show up to this one. Still expect a bunch of Wolfpack fans to show their loyalty and be in attendance, but these late tips, especially with the trajectory of how things are going right now, it can be a little bit of a tough ask. ACC after dark just ain't as good when the uh, team's playing after dark. You know, they aren't the prettiest. They aren't the sexiest. They're mo- they aren't the most attractive. I mean, let's just be honest. Nobody wants to be seen after dark with either one of these teams right now if we're keeping it a, an entire uh, stack about what these teams are. But, but, you know, it's like you said. In terms of the uh, how close are we to midnight doom clock, we're, we're at 11.59 with about 30 seconds left. Yeah, I would not slam the door entirely just yet. I would not slam the door entirely just yet. You know, I. It, it's like X-Files. I want to believe. <laughs> I want to believe. There's just not much evidence given to me at this point that says that they're going to put a product on the floor that we can believe in and get behind. So with that in mind, I I leave it here. The the pack have to show up and show out tonight, and I don't want to hear not an ounce, not an ounce of moaning, complaining, whining about fan support or lack thereof. Because, again, have you given the fans something to support? We would certainly love to be proven wrong. In fact, we are begging to be proved wrong here. We welcome it. We would like to be proved wrong. NC State is actually a three and a half point favorite over the Hurricanes, which may or may not be a surprise depending on who you ask. But the Hurricanes come in with the same conference record as five and four. We're not going to get into keys for this game because like Kenton's message, we're going to keep it simple here. You got to show us something. You got to show us some want to. You got to show us the vibe in that locker room. These guys still have plenty to fight for. They're they're still trying to get into that top four range of the ACC and potentially get into the dance. Again, that doomsday clock hasn't hit yet, but ooh, buddy, it is right there. It is right there. And another stumble tonight in PNC. You might leave yourself with mere seconds after that one. I wanted to get into a question, a little bit unorthodox because it's not Friday, but our guy Andy asked us, asked us a good question. Andy, we didn't forget about you, so I wanted to chew on this for a couple minutes here on Tuesday. Here it is. Andy asks, with the season in shambles and the fire Kevin Keats debate, even with the drought that our program has endured, why is it so hard to find a solid, proven coach who would want to revive a program in the shadows of two of the biggest blue bloods 30 miles away? So I don't think it's so much that NC State can't hire a coach that can get it done. It's just that We haven't. We found ourselves in probably about four or five consecutive unsuccessful hires. And it does suck when you look down the road and you see all the success that Carolina and Duke have had. And especially just these couple of years ago, when you have Roy Williams hang them up and you have Coach K hang them up and you're thinking as an NC State fan, is this it? Is this is this when we finally take advantage of these other teams transitioning power? And maybe we can make a run at this thing. And you see how the last couple of years have gone for us. But 
it is so frustrating. We're not going to get into the coaching search, obviously. We still have a whole month left to play, so we'll cross that bridge when and if we get there. But it's it's just a it's the bigger question of why is this happening to NC State? How did we find ourselves in this situation? Of course, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just that we've had several unsuccessful hires. I think we're an attractive landing spot for coaches. Of course, we're in the ACC. You're on Tobacco Road. You have a storied history within your program. It's just we keep finding ourselves year after year somehow still stuck in the mud. You know, I I don't like to get into people's personal lives on there, but Grayson is a a, a fine young man. He's a, he's a good looking young man. Where and, is this going? And, and 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 here's the deal, right? Grayson is by all accounts amazing human being, great looking young man. Do you think that many women would be signing up to date him if they knew that Victoria's Secret models were in his DMs constant? Do you think that would be the case? And let me tell you what I mean by that. The last part of this is why it has been so difficult. I'm not going to say that this job is as unattractive as, let's say, the Panthers hire recently. Like that, that job was legitimately extremely hard to fill in terms of people who wanted to be there because they've had, what is it, three coaches in the last 36 months or something crazy like that? That's not a place where people want to be. People are actively avoiding that. However, NC State is not being actively avoided in that same way because the landscape of college basketball is changing in the way that it is. It's still not easy. It's not an easy pitch to say, hey, uh, the school that had Michael Jordan and the school that had the guy who's widely regarded as the greatest college coach of all time, those two are right around the corner from you. Go beat them. You know, like that's that's just the reality, you know. And like I said, like I said, again, not going to delve into the, the personal lives here, but I'm sure that if that was Grayson's reality, you know, I'm not saying he wouldn't like it. I, I'm sure he would love it. But I'm saying that any potential suitors for Grayson are like. If only finding a championship caliber coach were that easy, perhaps we might have done it by now, as we've seen 30 years kind of slip past with yeah. honestly nothing to show for it. But, you know, it it is a hard sell when you do look down the road. But I don't. in my mind, I think eventually you're going to have somebody come along that wants the challenge and then will attack it with that same attitude, basically. And yeah. Yeah. we thought maybe Keats would be the guy. You know, he comes in. Kevin Keats is a winner. He introduces ice cream on the road. There's a lot of excitement in the early years, not to mention you go to the tournament in your first season in Raleigh. But then after that, we've just stalled back in the mud again. And so we're, you know, we're finding ourselves maybe at the end of his tenure, maybe not. And we're looking, all right, well, if we get to this point, who could possibly come in and maybe change the tides of how this thing is going? I don't know. Maybe it's a tough sell. Maybe I have some red tinted glasses on and thinking, I think it's a pretty good sell. I mean, you have all the resources you can essentially want. Maybe it's maybe it's apples to oranges a little bit, but you look at what the NIL has done for Wolfpack football. It's not to say that it couldn't also happen for NC State basketball, too. It's the same fan. The support for NC State sports is always going to be there so long as they feel like they're getting behind something that's going to be successful. The passion, as we all know, is unparalleled. And so it's a shame that things are currently going the way they're going with Coach Keats. We all wanted him to be the guy. It's easy to say eventually the sun will shine on us again, but I think there's so many positives, so much upside to NC State basketball that it will be sooner than later. I mean, trust me, I'm a Lions fan who just got done having the greatest season of my lifetime. (laughs) It, Mathematically speaking, it has to happen eventually. Like it, It literally has to happen. Everything must align at some point in time, but I... I do understand the frustration and the questioning of why can't we, because we're not even talking about, at least with, with Doran and football. Now we're having that conversation of what's it going to take for you to get over the hump because you're always knocking with basketball. It's like, we're not even like that. We're not at the door. We're not near the line. It's like security came into the line while we were in it. Like, Hey, no hats, no hoods, big fella. You got to go. 
Like I, that's that's the type of situation we're looking at here. So I absolutely understand the frustration. All of the frustration is valid. We are just as frustrated as many of you. It kills us to see a, a season go like this, especially when you had all the offseason hype of all the transfers and yada, yada, yada. You hope that maybe this season would be different when, in fact, it turns out to be, okay, we are still, in fact, NC State, still have some work to do. It won't be this season, so we're, again, we're going to wait till next year. But the best you can do is continuing to support our guys. And the season is obviously not going the way that any of us wanted it to. We're struggling through it. We're going to continue tweeting through it. But these guys are still going to go out there, at least you hope, and put on for NC State as hard as they can night in and night out. So we're going to have to see from here. Up next, we're going to get into a whole lot of nothing or a whole lot of something after a quick word from our sponsors. Our first sponsor of the day is FanDuel. Happy two weeks of Super Bowl anticipation to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, in the house, with your feet up, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and then placing some super, super bowl bets. FanDuel is just the place to do it. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three, maybe four. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers can join today, and you'll get $200 back in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more hits. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Middle portion of our Tuesday show, it's now time for a whole lot of nothing or a whole lot of something. Three topics to get into. Here's the first one. LJ Thomas scored seven points and grabbed three boards in just 11 minutes up at Syracuse this past Saturday, potentially making a case for more minutes. Whole lot of nothing or whole lot of something. Anybody that can put the damn ball in the basket at this point needs more minutes. Whole lot of something. Whole lot of something. I don't care what anybody says about what how well we've been playing defensively. If you can fill it up, you know, in the words of we, we got to switch sports on them. If you can be relevant when your number is called, we will put you in the game and leave you in the game. That's what we should do, at least. Maybe we can call upon Robert and I to come coordinate some offense on the basketball court tonight in PMC because we need every bit we can get. And LJ Thomas, I think, you know, I've mentioned this a couple times. He seems to provide a little bit of a spark when he's in there. He has this, he has this energy that you don't quite see from the other guys. He gets in there and he plays hard for however long that he is in the game. And so a guy like that at this point in the season, you kind of do have to keep finding ways to get him on the floor because when he's coming in, he is impacting the game in a positive fashion. So it's a whole lot of something. He should be getting more minutes. I've slowly been seeing more LJ Thomas stand accounts come out on social media, which is a little bit funny, but there it's funny because there's some truth to it. I do think he needs to be on the floor a whole lot more. Second one here, and this is a disgusting stat, so grip your seat a little bit because you're going to need to. Since January 1st, NC State ranks 342nd out of 362 teams in offensive effective field goal rate. Whole lot of nothing or whole lot of something? If you can look at this and say whole lot of nothing, I would like to ask you to cite your sources. As a matter of fact, don't cite your sources. I know who your source is. It's that little glass pipe that you need to light really hard in order to get the effect that you're looking for. Don't look that up if you don't know what it means. It's a reference to drugs. This is the, this is everything. This is everything. This is not just a whole lot of something. This is, and, and I mean this very genuinely, right? When I say, this is what I meant when I said these guys aren't playing for the name on the front or the back, right? If you're playing for the name on the front, you play as a team. Everything you do is as a team. You know, the defense, the defense is there. The effort is there. The intensity is there. You pick up your brothers, all that good stuff. If you're playing for the name on the back, at least you want to make a shot. At least you want to say, you know what? For the Burns family, I'm going to go ahead and hit them with this little drop step, whoop de whoop get them with, no, none of that. You know what? For the Parker family, I'm going to go ahead. And... No, 
None of that. For the and this is not a disrespect to those players in particular. Those were just last names that came to mind. So please don't take that as me saying those two are the problem. No, no, no. It's just an example. But what I'm saying is the lack of bucket getting. Again, this is a make or miss game. It does not matter how well you do everything else. You can have the perfect crossover. You can have the perfect bounce pass. You can run the best sets the world has ever seen. You got the perfect cutting movement. Work as hard as you want to get positioned and back your guy down to where he's under the rim. If you cannot tickle the twine with the ball, congratulations, it's all for naught. And as you clearly see from this efficiency that's so bad, only 20 teams in the nation. And mind you, we're not talking about football where there's nearly a third of that. We're talking basketball where there's a thing called mid-majors. They have mid in the name. <laughs> and they're out doing you offensively. Embarrassing. I believe I've used this before, but it's a whole lot of something because they've been hitting a whole lot of nothing. And obviously the offensive struggles are more than extremely well documented at this point. It hasn't been a slump. It's been more or less their identity. This is where the fight and the compete factors have to kick in. You have to yeah. keep finding ways to put the ball in the bucket. Regardless of how the offensive system has or has not worked, they have to just continue getting creative. You have to keep putting the ball in the hands of those who are getting the best looks. So if that is LJ Thomas coming off the bench, you got to do it. If it is DJ Burns, hopefully in the post and not the three-point line, you got to do it. If it is DJ Horn, just having to do it all by himself. If that's our best plan of action, then sometimes you got to do it. But this, that number is simply absurd. 342nd out of 362 in offensive effective field goal rate. P U. And I'll leave it there. Last one here. And this kind of transitioned us into our last couple minutes of the show, but NC state baseball catcher, Jacob Cozart has been tabbed as a top five catching prospect in the entire country for 2024. Whole lot of nothing, whole lot of something. We had one of our best players who was also a catcher transfer out of here. People were upset with Elliot Avon saying, oh my God, why didn't you play him more? What, what went wrong? How could you be so foolish? All that good stuff. Listen, Jacob ain't nothing to be played with, Okay. <laughs> I don't know if the young man's name is Cozart or Mozart because every time he gets on the field, it's a work of art. What are we doing here? <laughs> what are we doing? You've got to give this young man his love and respect, which everybody now is doing a whole lot of something. But I will say, say this. We have seen this story play out with NC State before where guys get a lot of love in the preseason. Teams get a lot of love in the preseason. And all of a sudden when that season creeps around – but we're not even going to speak that into the existence. I'm a, Actually, I'm going to leave it a whole lot of something because I believe that Jacob is going to show us exactly who he is. I don't care if it's a wild pitch that he barely catches. I know he's going to frame that thing up to where a bad up is going to give a strike in it. I know that when he steps up to that plate, it's going to be some, there's some guys on the mound going to be shaking in their boots a little bit because that's the type of guy he is. This is a guy that he can do it all. Uh, behind that catcher's play, I think he's a special, special dude. I, hey, whole lot of something. Cozart or Mozart might have to make its way into some Twitter commentary once the uh, once the season. It's a whole lot of something, and you said it perfectly, Kenton. There is a reason that Cannon Peebles decided to transfer out to Tennessee, and it's because you weren't going to beat out Jacob Cozart for the starting role this season in 2024. And Cannon Peebles did just fine as primarily the DH last year for NC State. But as a guy that wants more time behind the plate, you weren't going to get it at NC State. And that is why you saw him leave. So, I mean, no harm, no foul. But that's how good Jacob Cozart has been and potentially will be for the Wolfpack here in 2024. The, the progression in his three years at State have been remarkable. He struggled a lot as a freshman, as freshmen often do but absolutely lit it up last year as a sophomore. And so based on that trajectory, you could be seeing a special season from Cozart behind the plate for the Wolfpack. So yeah, it's a whole lot of something. Up next, we're going to round out our Tuesday show with a little bit more Pac-9 baseball talk after a quick word from our sponsor. Our second sponsor of the day is Jace Medical. 
I know we often come to sports to escape some of the crazy realities of life, but just for a minute, we got to be real about preparing for real life. According to the FDA, pharmacies are now running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade, which is pretty crazy. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than seeing some of your loved ones sick during a supply chain issue that might keep them from life-saving medications that they need. But thankfully, we'll all be okay, and that's because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, and many more. This stuff could happen to any of us, so you got to get over and visit jacemedical.com. Complete your physician encounter, and it will be reviewed by a board-certified physician. Your medications will then be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at just a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than it is today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code locked on to get $20 off of your order. That's locked on L O C K E D O N to get $20 off your order on Jace Medical. Last couple minutes here of our Tuesday show. Wanted to continue a little bit more talk about the Pac 9. They are getting Quite a bit of preseason love still. They've been ranked in quite a few preseason polls, anywhere from as high as 13 to as low as 22, I believe, from Baseball America just recently. The real reason I wanted to bring them up is because, actually, we got a couple preseason All-Americans. We just spent a little bit talking about Jacob Cozart. He is one of the top-catching prospects in the entire country. That was good enough for second-team All-American here for the preseason. But you also see our old friend, Rom-Com Dom. Dominic Fritton, who was a freshman starting pitcher for the pack last year, earns a third-team All-American honor for this year in the preseason, expecting bigger and better things from both Dom and Cozart here in 2024. But I think it speaks to a bigger picture of there's a lot of young talent. And in addition to these two, obviously, leading the way, there's a lot of young, unproven talent, but the the ceiling for this group in 2024 across the board between freshmen between transfers between some of the returners a lot of excitement really starting to circle around this 24 team a lot more content to come from us in the near future of course the season starting in just a little over two weeks but it's almost here and we have a lot of positive buzz around the boys i'm gonna tell you if you don't believe how much attitudes can change in two weeks Go back two weeks in the past from now and see how we were talking about the things we were talking (laughs) about. This baseball team is giving a lot of reason for optimism. And uh, we, I believe in this team. I believe that this team is going to put belt to behinds this season and that we we may end this thing with more all-conference and and all-American guys than we came into it. That'll do it for us here on Tuesday. As always, be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. Tell us what you think about why NC State Hasn't been able to get it done on the hard court. Tell us what you think about maybe LJ Thomas receiving a bump in his minutes played. Tell us what you think about the season that Jacob Cozart is about to have on the diamond for the Pac-9. Anything you got, put it in that comment box. Maybe some score predictions for tonight against Miami. Let us know what you think. And as always, mash that subscribe button if you have not already. That's all for Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.